Hey boys and girls, welcome to Flashlight Friday. As you can tell, Miss Underwood has the lights off and she has a tiny little light back here for us to read by. But I have a very special thing for you to see. I have a water gun and I am locked and loaded. And the reason why I have a water gun is because it relates to the book we are gonna read. This book is called Whoosh. And it is written by Chris Barton and illustrated by Don Tate. And it is called Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Adventures. And so, this book is actually an informational textbook. And Miss Underwood loves to read about African American characters to our class and especially true stories. So, let's take a little read about Mr. Lonnie Johnson. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson. The challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits. Bamboo shooters, rubber band guns, erector sheds, go-kart kit, bolts and screws and other spare parts his dad let him bring from the shed and various other things he hauled from the junkyard. Lonnie loved building and creating ideas for inventions and just kept flowing. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them, and he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught the kitchen on fire, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam that said he would not make a very good one. His dream had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew whoever had graded his test hadn't met Linux. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He had made out of scrap metal and named it Linux. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn his arms to move. The switches moved from an old broken jukebox and Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux. As a bonus, the reels looked like eyes. Lonnie wanted his to enter his creation in the science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitters to work. Without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science fairs came and went, and Lonnie missed one and then another until he got an idea. Now Lonnie may or may not have asked before he borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie. But it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux, the 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama, where only five years earlier, African-American students hadn't even been allowed. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming, now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. Soon, Lonnie left home to go to college in Tuskegee Institute, where he set out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as a guy who built his own booming sound system of cast-off electronics. It even had lights and flash in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation that took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. So look at that disco party going on. When NASA was sending an orbiter and a probe to Galileo, 
called, called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do it was Lonnie. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system to be able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. Some at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Monty convinced them it would. He was right. As it's photographed, Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at risk in a power failure, if not for Lonnie. And that's him presenting his idea. And then that's Galileo taking pictures of Jupiter. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working on hundreds of people at NASA or up late tinkering in his own inventions and finally in his own workshop. Lonnie knew the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners needed a new cooling system. One that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and nozzle, connected them to the bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then whoosh! The stream that blasted across the room was so powerful, it created a curtain swirling breeze and also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he had to glue the parts together to into a prototype, an earlier version with room for improvement. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work, a man asked. Sure, said Lonnie, wanna see? Lonnie worked up the pump, which squeezed air into the chamber, and he pulled the trigger, and air escaped. And uh, forcing the water out with a swish. For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't be just one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed help making more. So he went to a toy company after toy company after toy company. The word no flowed again and again, but finally one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie was also had other projects, a water propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith quit his day job, and devoted himself to full-time inventing. But soon, each plan fell apart, even the one for the water gun. Those things sometimes happen, but when they happen, one after another to the same person, well, that's some pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job, he didn't have the money he'd been counting on, and he and his family had to move out of his home into a tiny little apartment. He was angry and scared. But Lonnie had to dealt with many challenges in his life and he knew about solving problems and he believed in his inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker <coughs> who was interested in seeing the water gun if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried the new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, and pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high. Wow! Kids everywhere agreed that, wow, Lonnie's water gun called the Super Soaker 
became a smash hit. In no time, there were super soakers in backyards and beaches, on parks and playgrounds. Each sale of a super soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. All those hours, all those years that Lonnie spent in his workshop had paid off big time. Now he could afford to do just about anything he wanted. So what did Lonnie do? He had a he got a bigger workshop, which is where you'll find him today because facing challenges and solving problems and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do. And his ideas just keep flowing. Now, I thought that now that it's getting to be a little bit hotter outside, that most of us have some sort of water gun. And you know, the best kind of water gun to have is the super soaker, the one that has the pump action, right? And I thought it was very cool that I found a book about the inventor of the super soaker and that he's an African-American man who's still living and inventing stuff. That's pretty cool. So now you know the history behind the Super Soaker. And I remember being a little girl and Super Soakers being invented. And if you didn't have a Super Soaker and everybody else had a Super Soaker, you were getting totally wet, right? That's what happens now. So, I wish for you to have a great evening. And I hope that you... Think of Lonnie Johnson the next time you look at a super soaker and say, I know who invented that. And he's an African-American man and he's still alive and he lives in Alabama and he still invents things. So enjoy your evening, eagles. And Miss Underwood loves you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And thanks for joining me for Flashlight Friday. Bye.